If you're extracting teeth, eventually you're going to have to pick up a handpiece and start cutting a tooth or cutting away some bone. Now, in order for the handpiece to be effective, we're going to have to have a burr in it. <laughs> so we better look at some surgical burrs so that you can be well prepared for when the situation arises and have an idea of when you might employ a certain burr for a certain situation. Now, I have to preface this conversation by saying that these are the burrs that I use in practice and they're not necessarily the right ones to use or the only ones to use. So there's a whole variety of burrs out there and just like any other discipline, people like different types of equipment. So whatever works best for you is best in this situation. So just get out there, try a few of them and see what you like. I'm gonna give you the rationale for why I select what I do in this video and hopefully from there you have a good foundation to build off of. So for starters, we're using the surgical length burrs. That's what we're gonna talk about first. So these are the regular friction grip burrs that have a longer shank on them. Now the longer shank allows you to cut deeper down into the tooth and reach down to where the furcation of the tooth would be so you can get a nice complete section of those teeth that you're trying to cut through. You can also reach down into the socket with these to get down around root tips or fragments of root that you still need to get out and you maybe don't have a good purchase point on. So the 699 or the 700 burr is a good choice for when you're trying to get a root tip out or something in the situation where you don't have a great purchase point and you maybe need to trough a little bit about around the remaining root fragment. So the 700 burr is the one that I use and it's a very thin tapered fissure burr. It reaches right down and it makes a nice thin cut in the bone around that root tip so that I can get a root tip pick seated nicely in there to get some leverage on the root and get it out. Now the other nice thing about the 700 burr is when you cut a little trough with it, that ELSX3 Luxator that I like so much actually fits right down into that little trough that you make and it fits very snugly. So it gives you a nice engagement of the remaining tooth structure that you're trying to remove. The 701 burr, so that's one step up from the 700, is a little bit wider, but same design. So basically the 701 is really nice, I find, for sectioning molar teeth. Now the reason I like it is that it gives you a little bit more space between the roots when you section them versus say a 700 burr. Cuts a little more efficiently because it's a bigger burr. And the other thing it does is it doesn't really destroy the tooth structure as much as say a 702 burr would, which is even fatter yet. So the 702 is great because it gives you this great big opening between all the roots and gives you lots of space to push the tooth into. But the downside to it is that if you're not on target with your sectioning, it's not as forgiving. So you can have a bigger margin of error using a 701 surgical burr because if you're slightly off in your angulation and you're cutting into a root, you're going to cut away less of that root structure and hopefully there will be enough integrity left there to keep the root in one piece to allow you to deliver it more easily. Now the other burr that you could choose would be say the Lindman 162 burr. Now these things are mean looking. So when you see them, they're kind of scary. They'll make you hide in the corner. <laughs> they have these big jagged edges on them and they just don't look like any other burr that you've ever seen. They cut very, very efficiently and you can see why when you see one. You look at the picture that we have here and that shows you just how mean this thing looks. So basically it's designed so that when it's cutting, the little flutes on it or the little edges expel any debris that might be collecting on it. So it's trying to keep from clogging which allows it to keep cutting very efficiently. Of course, there's all different angles for it to cut on, so you can cut through teeth very, very quickly. Some clinicians prefer to use a straight surgical handpiece. Now, they can purchase burrs for these that are the same as the ones we talked about previously that come in a longer shank length that will fit into the straight handpiece, and they can utilize those burrs in the exact same way that we just discussed. Now, where I like to use a straight surgical handpiece is for taking out lower impactions. Now the reason I like it is that they cut very efficiently, they're high torque, you get good angulation at those teeth when they're tipping over like that, and you're able to get good visibility back there as well once you learn how to use it. Now some people will use a number eight round burr when they're troughing around those teeth and then they'll switch into say a 702 fissure burr to get in there and section the tooth. What I like to do is use a single burr for this and I use a 1703 L burr and what I like about it is it's kind of like a hybrid burr. So it's got a rounded tip, but it's also a tapered fissure burr. So it's terrific for cutting the trough, and it's terrific for sectioning teeth. 
It also has about a seven millimeter flute length, which is a great depth gauge for my trough. And it also gives me some guidance as to where I am through the crown of the tooth in the cervical direction and in the uh, buccolingual direction as well. So it's a really nice burr to use and it keeps you from having to change out partway through the procedure. If you're using a straight handpiece to remove teeth, you should consider using a burr guard over that handpiece, which is going to protect the patient's soft tissues and help to make sure that you're not burning the tissue or causing a tissue avulsion from the shank of that burr spinning on their lip as you're sectioning or cutting at the back of the mouth. Now you should always have good visibility of everything before you step on that pedal to start your handpiece and you should have a retractor in place to protect the soft tissues, but sometimes you slip up and if you do, the burr guard might really save you. Finally, you can get basically bone burrs that look kind of like acrylic denture burrs that can go in there to do alveoplasties or different procedures like that when you maybe take out multiple teeth and they're really nice because they can clean things up and smooth it off in kind of a bulk fashion. So they're kind of like a football shaped burr that goes in there just to mow down any of those interdental bony spicules or anything that's left after the teeth come out.